Now, how are you with robocalls that come on your uh, your phone? You know, for me, it goes in spurts. Yesterday, I got three, two from a big hotel chain offering me deals I did not want, and the other showed up as a spam risk on my cell phone. You know, they drive me crazy. Hi, I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor over here at Bloomer Boomer, and those calls are really minor inconveniences compared to other scams that are being foisted upon unsuspecting people. And what's the best way to not get caught in a serious scam? Well, today we are, uh, we are talking to someone who knows a thing or, a, or two about it, an attorney who helps get victims of these crimes out of trouble, and she is Melissa Negren Wiener, who specializes in elder law. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Melissa. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, I am sure that you have seen all kinds of scams. You know, how do these per, uh, perpetrators, um, you know, how do they find the victims in the first place? Well, what we see a lot uh, in our office dealing with seniors and, and with the elderly um, really are a lot of uh, kind of the same scams over and over again. And um, mostly what they're, they're playing on is the, the fear and um, the isolation of this demographic of individuals. So um, we see things like um, romance scams. So these are um, online typically where somebody who is, you know, um, either widowed or, or divorced and they're alone, um, either family is working or maybe they don't live near any family. Um, they, they, you know, develop these relationships online and it really starts out as um, a relationship. They talk, you know, online and then it moves to the telephone. And then the next thing you know, the individual is asking for money and, um, you know, under the preface of, of, of coming to meet. That is the, crazy. The, I, you know, uh, and now let me take <laughs> let me take an educated guess here are are women more often the target of the, that kind of a crime yes yes that, that that's what we see definitely yeah yeah now one of the things that that puzzles me is um you know i do think we get a little smarter as we get older uh maybe not but so why isn't it just enough to to use good old fashioned uh common sense when we uh, hear about offers that are are just too good to be true Again, it's, uh, it's really playing on the, uh, the fear. Um, and it's amazing, you know, as like you said, you know, you think we get older, we get wiser, but it's really more of a, uh, an initial, um, how it's been described to me is an initial, uh, initial fear. And then, um, or, or I'm alone and this person wants to talk to me and kind of the, ra the, the, the logic kind of goes out the window. Now, you something know, uh, like the one you described earlier, I don't really picture that as a big organized crime uh, group. I picture it as maybe some individual guys out there who are just seeing if they can uh, be successful uh, at, at this kind of crime. Is that kind of what it is or what have you seen? You know what? I don't. I don't really know the answer to that. I mean, it could be uh, one-offs of a, of a larger organization of people. Um, you know, it's not something that lasts that long because if you think about it, once the relationship has become, um, you know, become a relationship, and the the person on our end, the senior, you know, they truly believe that this individual is in love with them. This is, you know, the real deal. And once they send money, and that person never comes it's likely not going to happen again or maybe it will happen one other time um before the the senior uh says you know what something is something is not right yeah, something here. doesn't sound right and would right. that be a case where say hey send me money so i can travel there or uh, yeah yeah that's that's uh, maybe airfare something like that then after they send the money they're gone right Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And are the scammers from the U.S. or abroad? I mean, I know we're talking about all different t um, situations and, and different scenarios, but are they from here, from elsewhere? Um, both. I've actually seen both. Uh, I've, I've seen, you know, from people who are kind of in their own backyard and people who are out of the country. 
Yeah, I, you know, I uh, I know that back in the day there was the uh, Nigerian scam that uh, I guess covered all kinds of uh, situations, for anywhere from being stranded somewhere and they needed help to uh, uh, having a lover back there. But what's the most? Uh, well, I guess the most common is that the uh, the the uh, one where they uh, appeal to your loneliness and to your love needs. Um, I wouldn't say that that's. The, the typical, the, the, I'd say the most common one that we hear about is um, the grandparent scam, for lack of a better word. So that's, uh, you know, when somebody um, makes a phone call and, you know, it's a uh, high grandma, high grandpa, this is so-and-so and I'm, I'm uh, it's your grandson and I'm in jail or something happened and I'm in trouble and I need money. And again, the feedback that I've gotten from clients who have been through this is, you know, again, that initial panic kind of makes you not necessarily think logically, right? Um, yeah, that so, uh, you, you don't uh, think logically when you're under in panic, do we? You don't, you don't. But an interesting story was uh, I was at my parents' house a few months ago, and my uh, my father is Greek, so all of his grandchildren call him Papu. That's oh, Greek, uh -huh. grandpa. So somebody called, and I hear my father talking, and I hear him say. Oh, you're looking for your grandpa? You're looking for grandpa? And then he said, my grandkids call me Papu. And he hung up oh. because this person called and said, grandpa, he was in jail. And I need money. And this is what's going on. And I need you to send the money here. And, and my father, thankfully, kind of realized that, wait a minute, this person is not even calling me by the right, the right name. But that's why I always tell people when I have these conversations, they need to just kind of stop for a second and think about what's happening. That's what is really the person true. saying? Hang up the phone and call that grandchild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, the whole shock factor is what gets you. I think. I mean, out of the blue, you get a call, and uh, until you get your wits about you, you know, you're still in shock. But I know this may sound a little bit heartless, but do you think some people uh, make themselves an easier prey for scammers? Um, I don't know if they make themselves an easier prey or if it's just virtue, you know, but, but the nature of their situation, um, you know, whether they're um, struggling, you know, um, you know, mentally or anything like that as they get older. Um, I think it really just depends. Yeah. And, you know, the, and, and also I think the scenario that you described um, kind of answers my question here a little bit, but, but I was kind of wondering why there aren't uh, government law enforcement agencies that can be more helpful in these types of situations. They have, um, you know, these kind of elder abuse uh, in the police department, these dedicated individuals for this type of, of situation. But these kinds of things, too, you know, they don't necessarily only happen to the elderly. It's just that they seem to be a little bit more fragile and um, and susceptible to being taken advantage of. Now, with this with the uh, coronavirus and uh, the CDC, we have all these other things going on all of a sudden where um, people are getting emails from, you know, saying it's from the CDC and they uh, can send them something to help them avoid getting sick and I mean, it's just like as soon as something happens, they're right on top of it to try to take advantage of individuals. Yeah, that uh, uh, it's a it's really uh, frightening. Um, anything else for people who can protect themselves, and also uh, tell us how someone can get hold of you if they need help. Oh, sure. Um, well, we're Genzer Kona Elder Law. And we can be reached at 631-390-5000. And our website is genserlaw.com. So we can be reached um, either way, by phone or on our website. Um, and really, um, my advice is to um, the adult children of these individuals uh, or whoever's acting maybe as power of attorney um, or whoever's taking care of them to make sure they have a power of attorney. Make sure that you can kind of peek at the mail when you're there visiting, take a look at the bank statements, just make sure you don't see anything funny going on. That's typically how these things get picked up where you know we'll be contacted uh, by somebody just not that long ago by a woman who was giving money to um, 
her, it was a church, not a church that she had belonged to for very long. Um, but it turned out that the individual that was behind it wasn't really part of the church and, and her family members picked it up because they saw what was happening with the bank accounts. So I definitely urge, you know, the caregivers, the adult children to kind of keep an eye on, on what's going on. Well, good advice. And uh, I'm glad that there are uh, uh, legal attorneys like you out there to help out. And uh, Melissa, thanks so much for your time. Oh, thank you so much. Well, thanks, Melissa. That was Melissa Negrin Wiener, who is partner at Genser Kona Elder Law Firm. Thanks for joining us, you all, and see you next time. So long.